and this will be also part of the recording later. Okay, got it. Good morning, good afternoon, actually, everybody, depending on uh, whichever part of the country you are in. This is Rajita Bamakanti, registered nurse, faith-based holistic coach, and founder of Healthy You Lifestyle Center. Um, you know, last few months uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, in the news, we have had heard so much about the cytokine storm. A lot of us do not know what that was and also we have heard how it was disproportionately affecting some more than the other some of them just had symptoms and some were so sick that they needed to be on a ventilator so to explain to us what it is and how we can manage um, to contain our immune system and um, address all the functions of our immune system Dr. David Hanscom has uh, teamed up with several other brilliant physicians, and they all came up um, with some of the toolbox kits that we can follow through. It, very easy to understand and uh, learn about. So here I have Dr. Hanscom, who's going to join us. He wrote a PDF to help us guide through this process. And um, I would like to welcome Dr. Hanscom. Hi, how are you doing? Happy, happy to be here as usual. So, Thank you, Dr. can you tell us, um, you know, from you wrote this book for us, um, if people can see it, Plan A, Thrive and Survive During COVID-19. And um, tell me what, what, was, what was behind that? Well, we were actually started the study group oh, about six months ago, looking at chronic pain in general. And the goal is, you know, chronic pain, as we've talked about, is a solvable problem. And even since I've talked to you last, things have changed a bit in that I've said for a long time that anxiety is the pain. Anxiety is not psychological, it's physiological. In other words, it's how the body works. But what we've since found out, even in the last few weeks, that anxiety is actually inflammatory. And what happens is it boils down to threat versus safety. And when your body feels safe, you're full of these, what's called cytokines that are anti-inflammatory, that help you regenerate, rest, cells grow, they thrive, your brain cells, everything thrives in the presence of these safety cytokines. What cytokines are is that they're minuscule pieces of protein, about 160 amino acids long, they communicate cell to cell, white cell to white cell, um, the bloodstream to the cardiac muscles. Um, I mean, they're everywhere. They're neurotransmitters. They transmit information throughout the entire body. What makes the engine run really are those called cytokines. Now, when we talk about the cytokine storm, what's happened under threat? Your vagus nerve says danger. Mm -hmm. It fires up your immune system to fight off the bacteria. Then if that doesn't work, once the bacteria is invaded, then you need inflammatory cells to actually clean up the mess. For instance, when you have a boil on your skin, we've all had those, where the pus is literally white cells that have cleaned up the bacteria and they have died. But if you notice when you have a boil, there's a little bit of a cavity under the skin, so the, the inflammation actually destroys the tissues. What happens with the cytokine storm is that it's not the actual cytokines, it's the inflammation that they cause. So you develop this massive inflammatory process, the walls of the blood cells open up, so the white cells, which are larger than red cells, can actually traverse the blood cells into the tissues to clean up the virus. Mm -hmm. What happens in the lungs, the fluid from the blood vessels goes into the lungs and you literally drown in your own fluids. So what we're doing, the cytokine storm is the inflammatory cytokines that cause the inflammatory process. And we're not so sure that it's a cytokine storm, it's just the normal level of cytokines that are going up to clean out the virus. The problem is that people that are dying all have risk factors that have elevated cytokines, inflammatory cytokines, before they get sick. Mm. Any threat, any threat is met with a elevated levels of cytokines. It can be a mental threat or physical threat. So things like cardiac disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, irritable bowel, colitis, obviously inflammatory bowel diseases, rheumatoid arthritis all have elevated inflammatory markers. But guess what? So does anxiety, depression, psychosis, Alzheimer's all have inflammatory cytokines. 
And what happens, threat can be a mental threat, and mental threats being repressed thoughts and emotions. Um, anxiety is a sensation generated by the cytokine, so anxiety is the result, not the cause of it. But the mental threat can be worried about the COVID crisis. There's nothing better to create threat than uncertainty. Mm. We have a tremendous amount of uncertainty, which means our body is responding to this threat with elevated cytokines and an inflammatory response, which actually destroys the tissue. The irony is the more legitimate your threat, the more damage it causes. Most stress is a stress that you can't control. We cannot control the COVID virus or the pandemic. We can't control the politics. We can't control anything. But you can learn ways to lower your body's cytokine response so that in spite of the threat, you allow yourself to feel safe. So that's what the whole process is in the book. There's 10 different things you can do to actually lower your cytokines before you get sick. So if you start with a lower level of cytokines, then when you have that cytokine rise, there's a higher chance that you're going to stay below that threshold. So that's why, it, that's why it's called not survive and thrive. It's called thrive and survive. Oh Again, as you learn skills to be safe and thrive, in spite of whatever risks there are around you, you actually get to be safe. So is that the same as, you know, like how um, some people that had underlying chronic diseases where, you know, had much more severe symptoms. Right. So did they have a higher level of uh, cytokines? Yes, all the diseases that are at risk, cardiac disease, lung disease, all these different diseases have elevated cytokines. So, and then everybody processes stress differently. So remember, if you process stress appropriately, the cytokines are not gonna be elevated. So you have two people with lung disease, which is chronic, and they probably both have elevated cytokines. But then you take the stress of the virus, do you process it well, or do you get more stressed out? As you get more stressed out, of course, you have a higher chance of the cytokine, what we call cytokine storm, which just really means the cytokines cross the th critical threshold that it compromises your lungs. So for instance, poverty is a huge threat. Mm. So let's talk about blacks are dying at seven times the rate of whites. Why is that? Okay. So first of all, vitamin D is actually a factor in COVID. So lack of vitamin D is a risk factor for death. But what happens is that in Africa where they were raised, the environment they were raised in, there's lots of sun, so they didn't need as much vitamin D. So when they're over here in an environment that doesn't have as much sun, the vitamin D here is not enough to actually convert. Um, so what happens, they have a vitamin D deficiency. So that's a stress, a lack of vitamin D. Poverty is a stress. Um, obviously, I'm now learning. I mean, I've, I've known this for a long time. I have many friends that are African-American. But, I mean, the numbers on the way we treat African-Americans in our country compared to other races is ridiculous. It's insane. So my trainer is a great guy. And he tells me whenever he is stopped by a policeman, he just puts both hands on the steering wheel, takes a deep breath. And so they're not living in an environment that's safe. That's not fair. Yeah. So that's, again, another threat that's very chronic. Again, under chronic threat, your body has a stress response that elevates your inflammatory response. So, again, when you get sick, it may be the same viral response, but you're already so high that you go right over the threshold and you pass and you pass away. That's why black males, of course, have a higher chance of being incarcerated by far than whites. And you can be incarcerated for nothing. So how do you live your life if you can't predict when you're going to be incarcerated or picked up or not? Yeah, yeah. And then even though it's not, even though percentage-wise, the odds of you actually being that person is low, it's, it's that intermittent reinforcement that is also deadly. So that constant state of threat or constant potential threat is as much of a threat as actually the physical threat. So it's all about threat versus safety. We've talked about this before in chronic pain, that the essence of solving chronic pain is feeling safe, which means it allows you to be comfortable with anxiety, learn to train yourself to react to stress, and just learn to be who you are, both with anxiety, anger, good parts of life, et cetera. So you get to live in your entire life and feel safe. In that state of mind, in state of existence, your body's resistance is better. You actually live longer. People on chronic stress die on the average of seven years faster than people that don't have chronic stress. Again, I'll say it again. People talk about stress management. 
But the stress that really takes a toll on people is actually the stress that you can't control, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what do you do? What you do, you learn to control your neurochemical response to the threat. And so you, you definitely a learned skill. It's not very hard. And you already know all my lines. We've been through this lots of times before. And that's what we talked about in my interview later is, you know, the different ways of doing this. But I would ask your audience to really download the PDF. Please pass it to as many people as you can imagine. Because I'm trying to create, I am going to create a national email campaign starting right here, right now, this week. I'm getting this message out to the world. Every one of those things are things that are common sense. But what's been helpful for people, and I think you found the same thing, is that, okay, we do mindfulness relaxation. We talk about that relaxation, you know, what's, what's the big deal? Well, it changes, it changes, it, re, it translates into changes in your body's chemistry. Or we talk about the expressive writing. For some reason, that simple tool drops down inf inflammation. Not psychological, you just directly somehow calm it down the cytokine response. So what the brochure will do to help you understand why you're doing what, how it works, even deep breathing exercises stimulate the vagus nerve, which actually knocks down the cytokines. So it's been fascinating for me the last six weeks. I'm just actually blown away. Because again, I've always talked about adrenaline and cortisol and stress chemicals, but they're too slow. They're, they're these, in these cytokines, there's trillions and trillions and trillions of these things. So there's 50 trillion cells in the human body, and the cytokines are a fraction of this size. They live on the surface of every cell in the body. They coat it. And so when you have a fight or flight, it's actually that cytokine switch that's flipping the switch in your nervous system, of course, both. So we're talking about adrenaline cortisol and fight or flight. It's actually the autonomic nervous system in your brain and these little cytokine switches that are creating the reaction it takes to survive. And I'm embarrassed in this round table, there's a bunch of physicians on the round table. And I know we learned this someplace in medical school, but Dr. Stephen Portis wrote the polyvagal theory, wonderful guy, very, very learned on this stuff. Then a friend, a friend of mine, Dr. D.R. Clausen, who's a rehab doctor in Seattle, has an unusual uncanny ability to follow all these things we learned in medical school and bring them into current day practice and put it all together. And we're just, we're all humbled. We're just, right. so I also can like go back to medical school with this. So I, I'll, I'll take, I'm excited. I can put people in the same room that are a lot smarter than I am. Um, I, I think the necessity is that I, I don't understand what they're saying exactly. So by the time they get done explaining it to me, it comes out in a reasonably understandable way to the rest of the world. And I think that's what my contribution is. Wow, that's wonderful. So you're saying this, we can use this all the time. This yeah. is our Bible that we can use and you know, uh, manage our perceived anxiety or actual anxiety, you know, the threat, whatever we are feeling to kind of calm ourselves down and, um, you know, to lower our um, cortisol levels. Well, again, it's the cytokines. The cortisol right. is a slower thing. So the, the cortisol actually kicks up the glucose. So that's a slower response. So it's really these inflammatory cytokines. Okay. Again, I'm embarrassed to say I forgot about them. And D.R. Clausen brought these to life. But they're so powerful. And it's not so hard to figure this out. But, yes, please pass it on to every human being that will read this. It's not about just the cytokine storm for COVID. It's for your general health. And we're publishing another paper showing that every chronic disease from arthritis, lupus, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, di type 2 diabetes is all related to inflammatory cytokines. So insulin resistance is actually mediated by inflammatory cytokines. So it's a whole cascade there, again, that Dr. Clausen's be able to show us so clearly. And um, for instance, the peripheral neuropathy of diabetes. I mean, simplistically, as a physician, I'm, I'm embarrassed not to say this, but I think most physicians somehow think that this elevated blood sugar somehow damages the nerve. It's the inflammatory cytokines. Wow. Because, I mean, sugar is not going to damage the nerve. It's just a nerve, just sugar. But what the cytokines do, they're actually damaging the – they're inflaming the nerves. So the nerve conduction for a while, a while doubles, but you're actually physically damaging the nerve. Cardiovascular disease. We talk about cholesterol. Well, what's actually happened, these little inflammatory cells are actually chewing up the walls of the blood vessel. Then the cholesterol lodges on it, but it's not the cholesterol, it's the inflammation. Mm. 
Oh, wow. So, okay. So we can use these tools and that can also lower our medication dosages, you yep. know, as we are practicing this, you know, more and more, we can get our medication uh, down. Right. And hopefully get them off of it. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And um, we are very fortunate to have Dr. Hanscom during our World Health Summit. He will be talking to us about um, how stress affects our immunity. So we I'm having a wonderful conversation with him during that time. So please do join us uh, during the World Summit. And um, thank you for sharing this wonderful uh, PDF, Dr. Hanscom, and we are looking forward to the next one coming on and we look forward to seeing you at the summit. And by the way, as you know, all the, so the brochure gives us an overview of, overview of everything and the website backincontrol.com is actually the action plan to go into details. So there's layers of learning this. So the brochure is a starting point, but the details are actually on the website. Okay, I will put that in the description below. And if y'all have any issues, if y'all need additional information, always contact me and I will send you up. And if y'all have any follow-up questions for Dr. Hanscom, always put it in the comments below and I will circle back with him and get back to you guys. Thank you very much, Dr. Hanscom, for joining me today.